Today we're going to cover the beginning of the instructional videos for Master Golden Yin Quan Ping Tai Chi form. Um, we'll begin today with the first two moves, which are Strike Palm Praise Buddha and Grasper's Tail Left Side and Grasper's Tail right side. But before we begin, I want to kind of comment on a couple of things on learning um, the form uh, through um, these presentations on YouTube. Um, I taught many, many people this form. This will be the first time I'm trying to teach it on uh, YouTube, something like virtual reality through uh, video instructions and one of the problems that I'm going to run into is the variance in the um, abilities and um, uh, experience of the, many of the people that are watching. I have everything from people who are just very beginning and they want to learn the form and they don't really have a very big background in martial arts and then there'll be the advanced practitioners who want to understand the form further, um, whether they know this particular original form or whether they know a variation of the form. And many people have asked me to talk a little bit about the function of the movement. But I think uh, in, in my quest to preserve Master Guilin's legacy and preserve the traditional form as he taught it, um, I don't want to like get too carried away in a lot of those other details, uh, especially the application. Um, I will go back later on and cover some application. Application comes a lot from your own understanding and knowledge, from uh, probably trying to use the moves in toy show, which you have, and just your basic knowledge of application of martial arts. And um, whatever uh, Sissy did show me, I've been showing on YouTube some of the uh, function and quote application. I don't like the word application because application kind of refers to like a technique orientated as if in one move there was one technique for it because Tai Chi can change from one move to another. Um, just kind of a basic understanding of the function is really understanding the potential of that move. So yeah, for the um, instructional videos, we're not going to cover too much of that. I like the idea, and I'm going to borrow that from the Wing Chun of Julian Tao, which uh, translated means little thought. And the idea behind that in practicing Wing Chun is to uh, rote the pattern of movement without so much uh, thought about function so that you can kind of touch, actually concentrate on the movement and form. And so that's what we're going to apply here in learning the original Tai Chi Guan Ping form. We're going to concentrate on the moves as I was taught by Shifu so that I could teach the way that he wanted it. And uh, that's uh, what we're going to do. In most classic instructional uh, settings, um, Shifu was like old school. He didn't teach in a group form. He didn't like start a class presentation and start from movement one and then the next week movement two or anything like that. He taught one to one on an individual basis. Uh, so you had many different people of different levels doing different styles within one class just doing their thing and people would walk around and work with each person individually or you have somebody else you know, teach uh, another individual. But everybody was doing their own um, where they were uh, within that uh, format. Um, I see a lot of uh, lessons taught by instructors and they have a bunch of people, say a dozen people behind them and then they start doing the form together. There's some problems with that kind of teaching in that um, one, the instructor can't really see if the students are doing it correctly, you could have somebody else lead it and walk around and correct them. But then everybody has to wait for that other person that's slow and lagging to uh, catch up. 
there's a lot of problems. And also, another uh, huge problem is rote learning, which is uh, basically the classical tradition is rote learning. Uh, what, I, what do I mean by that is this. I'm going to show you the movement. And just by following the movement, you're going to be able to follow along uh, by mimicking what you just saw. Well, there's a lot of problems with that in that um, you're missing out in all the little details of the way that I perform it. And um, people don't perform the form, the Dalu, um, the same way every time. Um, I might perform it and try to express one thing and then even though I have that foundation of that uh, blockiness that we talked about in another video and hitting all those points, uh, if I decided to kind of round it off, then when you're mimicking me, you will be mimicking my understanding without understanding all those square points that got to that rounded move. And so that's one element of it. And also, you're trying to view it from one angle and you're trying to interpret from another angle. And also another problem is that not everybody learns the same way. The assumption of rote learning is that everybody can pick up through visual knowledge what the move is like. And people are not like that. I had one student that made me, made me very aware of this. He was I would show him a move, and then he would have difficulty learning it. And so one day I asked him, I said, Stephanie, are you able to visualize and take in this visual, you know, recording of the move and then translate it back into moving? He said, no. And so I asked him, I said, can you, like, imagine that kind of drawing of a three-dimensional cube on the chalkboard, and can you rotate that cube? He said, no, I can't do that. I'm not visual at all. He said, what I have to learn is by auditory. Auditory meaning that he hears the instructions and then he translates that through his mind into his uh, physical movement, which is a very harder process to uh, go through because there's many more steps involved in learning the thing. And when I uh, learned that from him, I realized that um, rote learning by visual, following somebody's movement, I had to change the way that I taught, and from that moment on, I would always use uh, voice, and you see in a lot of my other instruction videos, I'm talking a lot when I'm uh, showing the move to get that into the subconscious of the description of the movement and what you're doing, as well as just showing you what the movement is for. And so that's how we're going to do uh, this lesson. And also in one of the uh, recent uh, uh, video presentations, the three basics uh, that I taught learning before you learn the Guan Tin form, the original Tai Chi form. Um, I talked about all the bits of information that you have to take in before you can actually do one simple move. And in the very beginning, starting from scratch, you're gonna have to remember a lot of uh, different information. For example, this, the way that you sink, the way that you move this foot, the way that you put this heel out with no weight on, the way that you come through the center, all that is different bits of information. And eventually when you kind of learn it step by step, those bits of information will become one so that as you do it, it's all the first move in this form. Uh, it becomes ingrained into you and it becomes part of your subconscious. Um, another thing about rote learning is that there are many people that once they learn a particular way to move, they have a difficulty changing that because they're more into memorizing. And so when they memorize exactly that movement, step out a little bit, turn your foot, put your heel out, Raise the hand, come together, form the circle, touch your palm. 
once they learn it like that, they can never change it from that. And so if they learn it incorrectly from the beginning, they have sometimes have a very difficult time unlearning what they learn wrote. And so again, the difference between rote and conceptual is that you kind of learn the basics. Some people can build it and kind of just rough it out and then re-correct it. And they're easier to teach and easier to learn because they can just kind of block it out and then kind of uh, re-correct later on as they learn more detail. And so in giving instruction, I have to kind of consider all these different levels of learning as well. And so um, I'm trying to reach kind of a midpoint of teaching. So uh, let's begin with uh, just learning, and then we'll see how we go from here. We'll learn the first move, strike palm, dash, suda, which is basically an opening salutation. So uh, we'll begin from here. We're going to do a uh, demonstration of it. So. And again, one of the problems is that um, you can do this move many different ways. You can do a different sequence. For example, you can turn the foot out, raise the hands up, and sink as you come together. Or you can sink first and then do it all at one time. So because there's many different ways to do it, I have to come to kind of a compromised way of teaching it so that those people that have a hard time taking it all in can learn an actual sequence. So when I teach it in a sequential manner um, and break it down, um, that's kind of going to give you kind of a foothold to hold on to so that you memorize it. Not that that's the only way that you could do it, but um, everybody has to start off at one point. And so uh, that's how I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it in a kind of an easy sequence for people to remember. Okay. So in the beginning, to stand at attention, empty your mind like Stephen Pao, little thought. Kind of like breathe deeply and relax and let yourself sink down. The very first movement is relaxing and sinking down. At the same time that you sink down, the hands will go off to the side. So one way to practice this is just basically just doing repetitions of that one portion of the move. Okay? We're going to turn this foot out just up a little bit, not quite 45, just so it's a little bit easier to sit down and it would be in the right direction when we do the second move. So from here, we're going to turn this foot out and then sit down and raise the hand to shoulder level. Then you can put your foot out on the heel, very light, just like, like that. Okay. Again, from the beginning, turn the foot a little bit, sit down, Raise the arms, very relaxed, but the arms are like lifted up by helium. And then as you're sinking down, just do that. And then when the arms are going out, totally to the side. So sink down, and to the side, up to shoulder level, heel, slightly out. You just kind of take it a little bit at a time. Just turn the foot. Sink down, heel. From here, you're going to form a circle. So I'm filming uh, from the side as well, so that I'll be able to cut to a side view rather than having to turn every time. Also, uh, uh, we're just going to learn a couple of moves, so it's not quite as important for today, but. Uh, when you're doing your form, always face in the same direction so that when you're in your workout area, it helps you orientate as we go through uh, more sequences of, of the form. You have to remember your direction, which way to turn, and by always facing the same direction, it will um, be much easier for you 
remember the sequence and the orientation. So I'm using a camera to uh, show the side view rather than having to turn every time. So again, from the tension, turn the foot, sink down, raise the hand to shoulder level, and then form a circle. As you form the circle, like a standing meditation, the left palm with the fingers and the thumb relax, and the right edge of the right palm touches the left palm very lightly. Think of like a, a spark plug where you're just kind of like igniting a spark. So you're circulating the chi through your arms and then just, just sparking. Sometimes having a visual idea kind of helps you get a feeling of what the movement should be like. So again, standing erect, uh, butt is uh, tucked in. So from an erect position, first movement, right palm to ask you to turn the foot out, sink down, raise the hand, form a circle, edge of the right hand touches the center of the left hand. Just do it one more time all together. Turn the foot, raise the hands, palms down, form a circle, edge of the right hand, touch the center of the left palm. So that's the first move, right palm to F Buddha. From here, you're going to come into the center. And for now, it's okay to put your foot down so that uh, you can kind of practice the move. And then the hands are going to go off in a 45 degree direction. The left hand is pointing in that 45 degree direction and the right hand is forming a T with that hand and the distance is about mm, the distance from here to here. You should remember that. So in this movement it's like this hand is on right here and this hand is grabbing the fingers and Guiding down. So it's a three directional fun the function of movement is three directing the opponent as he's pushing in. So um, I don't want to get, again, I don't want to get too much into that idea. I'm just kind of explaining why your hand is to that distance. So again, from the beginning, turn the foot out, raise the hand out with the heel, form a circle, edge of the right hand, touch the center. First move. Right palm as Buddha. From here, come into the center. Notice I didn't change my height. Then reach out and form a T with hand. And left is straight forward, right comes across. At the same time that you do that, touch your toe on the back. Remember that uh, exercise, the three preliminary exercises. How imagine there's a cliff behind you so that when you step back, you're touching the ground, but your weight is still on the ground, okay? So again, from, uh, let's do it from this position here. You don't always have to go back to the beginning. You can go from the last position. From here, step to the center. Okay, if you put your weight on it for now, reach out. The same time that you reach out, once you touch that toe, like that, you just by repeating, this motion, you can get used to. So you notice that the further I touch that toe, the further I have to sink down in my stance. When I'm up this high, then I can only go to there. And again, the height that you're going to work from is going to be on how comfortable and strong your legs are, how agile you are. You don't have to go in a deep stance. But generally speaking, the height that you start from the opening is the height that you stay pretty much throughout the form, okay? So again, from the first move, turn out, sink down, strike palm to pray the Astruta. So from here, come into the center, and then reach out like this. Okay, one more time, and this time, as you progress, um, just do it step by step. If you want me to do that a hundred times, like the way I just showed, do it like that by putting your foot down, reach out, 
putting your foot back. As you progress, and again, this is what we're explaining in the morning, in the uh, beginning, in that uh, the different ways that you could do it, depending on the skill level that you're at, to change actually the way that you uh, put this together. So if we take the first move and kind of combine it, okay, from here, instead of like setting my foot down in the center, I'm just going to come through the center and reach out with the toe and the hands together. You notice that from here, my center stays, so as I reach out, I didn't move, and I'm just coming through with the hand and, and the feet into this position. From here, as you come from the stretched out position, you're going to just rock back as the toe comes up and hands slide down. If you go to the video uh, using Kung Fu principles in the Guan Ping Tai Chi, we cover this, uh, talking about kind of thinking of this as kind of floating down with the hands, like letting air out of a hydraulic gas. So basically you're just kind of relaxing and letting the hands kind of slide down. The further she come with the hands is right about say 45 degrees here from here. So you're coming from the T to this position here. So the hands change if they don't stay like this. This one pivots out and this one comes to just about across your body. Like that. From the T position with the hands, slide down, and just about where your hip is goes out in this direction is the furthest. Again, the hands stay in that distance from here to here, down to here. Left hand is just slightly higher than the right hand as it comes down. Okay. So again, in this move here, you can go over and over. So you get a feeling of it. And it's just relaxing. And you notice the timing of the sink from here to this final rock back position is the same timing as the hand. So learn how to coordinate timing of the hand with the end of that move. If in the beginning you finish your rock, it's not too bad, but try to learn how to synchronize uh, your move one with another. Uh, you're going to find many times in martial arts and kung fu that uh, the distance that one part of your body has to travel and the distance that another part of your body has to travel is different. And so you have to adjust the timing on those two parts in order for them to arrive at that destination at the same time. So here we're covering about this distance with the hands and we're just walking back not that far. So again, how fast you walk back and how fast you move the hands has to be coordinated. And so that'd be one of the things that you have to learn intuitively is to be able to move your body at different rates, not exactly the same timing. Again, if you were watching somebody and they look like this, you're kind of working really hard and having sort of just being able to relax with the flow and move. Let's take it from the beginning again so you can see all this uh, movement uh, put together. Turn the foot, sink down, raise the hand, heel goes out, form a circle, center, edge of the right hand, touch the center, left palm. From here, you're going to come in and reach out. And then you're going to do that sinking to right about here. From here, you're going to step back. Okay, this here again, this is a where in the beginning you just kind of come back and touch your toe so that you remember to come back. From here, you're going to step out in a horse, like in the 
three exercises that I had you practicing the ma, the horse, step out into your T stance. Again, at this point, you don't need to change the hands until so that you can learn the movements uh, uh, independently. From here, you want to turn your hands forward and push, and again, turn from the waist. Okay? So from here, take a back, walk back. You don't go past 45 here. The so hands are again six inches apart. Looking forward, step back. Notice I didn't go up or down. Step into the horse, and at that point, when you step into the horse, your foot has to turn out. Like that. See that foot turn out. Now you're in the horse with a T stand going on the 45. And from here, the elbow stays pretty much in the same place. Like that. And then pushing forward. So again, there's lots more and more details. And a lot of times as we go through the lessons, I'm not going to go into all the little fine details because it's already uh, assuming that this is like you just beginning. There's going to be too much to remember if I went into every little detail. But as we go further into the form, I think what I want to do is to teach maybe four, five moves fairly rapidly in these lessons. And then once you get the kind of a body that you can work with, body of movement that you can work with, then I'll go back and correct uh, and put in some of the details uh, that you really have to concentrate more on. But because you just, I assume that you're just starting out in this, uh, there's a lot of information to take in. And so I don't want to be, put too much into each lesson of what you have to remember because uh, we're just going to kind of simplify it. And again, this is that um, ability I talked about earlier where you can kind of like build your blocks and then rearrange them a little bit and then, you know, kind of fine tune them. And this is a skill that you actually need to cultivate to be able to learn like that because as you learn anything, um, when you're learning, you have to learn the sequence and you have to learn the details. And those are two things that you can work on independently of each other. You don't always have to do the sequence and uh, the details together. Being able to break up your learning pattern so that you understand the difference between sequence and pattern and the details is very important so that you can get to that point where you can fine tune and kind of rough it out and fine tune it. So one more time, kind of go back. From the beginning, attention, turn the foot out, raise the hands as you sink down, form a circle, edge of the right hand, touch the center of the left palm. Come back in through the center, toe and hands reach out together. Sink down, hydraulic release. From here to the stopping point. Step in, step out on the horse, and rotate, and do your push. Remember, turn from the waist, knee still goes out in that direction. It's the backward tail, right, uh, right side. Left side, and right side, uh, from the knees in the book. Okay, one more time. This time I'm going to do it without the description, but just do it exactly as I show you. So that's the way that the city part of that Portsmouth Square. Uh,
I had a little bit of a interruption at the end because my equipment failed. Um, the battery ran out on the audio, so I have to do this cut. So uh, just a reminder uh, to please, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'm trying to be pretty interactive with this YouTube channel and answer any questions that anybody has. I realize it's a lot to take in in the lesson, even the lesson lasted much longer than I uh, intended, but there's so much detail to cover that uh, sometimes it takes longer than I expect. And so uh, any questions you have, I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you. And in the next lesson, we're covering the next two moves, which would be single whip and stroke cool swing. Uh, probably present it within the next uh, week. And again, uh, just take these videos as fast as you are comfortable with progressing. Uh, I'm going to leave a library of this and the whole, all the lessons will be uh, there for the future. Thank you.